Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Saturday and uh, we've got the afternoon weather models in. I thought I'd wait for the European model to get done too so we could have some point of reference and be able to compare the two. You know, we've been telegraphing this idea that there is going to be some kind of pattern change for the second half of November. And when I said the second half of November, I meant from November 16th to beyond. Um, for some pe reason, some people thought that the second half of November meant the first half of November, but nonetheless, uh, we're starting to see more and more signs that we are uh, going to see some changes. Uh, the thing is that it appears at this point, uh, the more important part of the equation, the, um, the uh, precipitation part of the pattern may be changing faster than the uh, colder part of the pattern and that's not unusual they don't often change at the same time especially when you're you know sometimes you have you're looking for one thing to change one broad concept either the colder part or the stormy or the wetter part in this case because of the fact that we've been warm and dry we're waiting for two things to change and that's probably a harder thing for the atmosphere to handle but uh, it also makes for the process to be more grueling in this instance, it appears that I think the, the wetter part of the pattern is going to change first. Now, first off, uh, we're going to go into the uh, first part of next week, and, and that is because uh, models are showing low pressure that's going to develop, weak low pressure developing off the southeast coast. It's going to run up uh, along the coast with, a, with an area of rain. It's not going to be any big deal. Um, I point this out because we had uh, just a, a few days ago with models dealing with this, showing some sort of big storm uh, moving up uh, the coast of the southern New England, and we know that's not going to happen. And the reason why it's not going to happen is if you take a look at this upper air structure, it's very disorganized. You have one system here, and we're looking at the upper atmosphere. We have another uh, weak disturbance here. We have a third one there. We've got a fourth one here. So, you know, it, it's, it's very problematic. Uh, you don't have phasing going on you, you would need th these short waves to somehow phase together in order to have something powerful like you have uh, off the west coast uh, so uh, in absence of this we're going to have this weak system move up the the uh, eastern seaboard for tuesday now beyond that once that lifts out uh, if we look at the pacific uh, we start to see energy breaking down in the pacific from being controlled by one big storm uh, offshore into separate features and that's a positive from the standpoint of, of uh, precipitation because now we're actually seeing energy coming into the pacific and gradually making its way eastward so uh, when we look at the european model uh, you can see that energy now moves down uh, into uh, utah and the southwest and then lifts up into the plains but at this point What's happening is uh, you've got action going on in Canada and there's energy there. So this is only going to be able to lift so far north, even though you have this ridge here. Normally, this would favor something to go well to the west and north and not do very much. But because we have this bit of a cyclone up in Canada, there's energy there that this does. There's no room for this really. To, it can only get so far north. So what the model does is. It gradually translates that eastward, and then you can see here, now this is for next weekend, uh, it has that northern energy kind of phased up with the south, and the southern part of this is actually quite strong. So if, if this were indeed to play out, uh, there's a fairly, uh, in, I don't want to use the word intense, but let's say a fairly strong coastal low that winds up developing out of this. And when we switch to uh, the surface map, and I'll get a little tighter on it so you can take a look um, and see what it does, and we'll uh, switch regions so that we can um, get a better picture of it on this on this particular map. And you can see it here. Uh, the European uh, has uh, low pressure that develops uh, off the coast uh, with that southern stream feature and you can see it right there so that would probably be a pretty sizable rain event and also because there's a lot of cold there's cold air aloft with this because of the upper cyclone there would probably be some um, snow especially in elevated areas as you go into uh, Pennsylvania 
uh, down into West Vir northern West Virginia and eventually up into upstate New York. Uh, there's a, a cold air that does get drawn down with this as we move into the beginning of Thanksgiving week. So uh, I view this as a, a, um, a positive development in the sense that the model is actually you know, showing this at all considering where we are now in the stranglehold of this drought pattern. Now I'll switch over to the GFS model. It's a little different uh, in terms of the timing. It has the same idea and we'll, we'll put the uh, upper air on. Um, and it has the same idea here. So let's uh, put up the upper air. And you can see what, what this does. It's just 24 hours slower than the European. It tries to lift it up, and then it does that phase and strengthening of the southern system. The, the GFS wants to be a lot stronger with the southern system uh, than, than the influence from the north. So it has a much more well-defined uh, coastal low with all this. And, and, it's about, and it's a day later in how it gets there. So let's uh, I'll put the surface on for the GFS and you can take a look at that. And let me just get a little bit, there we go. So we'll get to that and we'll get the surface up. And you can see it here. It's got a little bit of a deeper, more inland low. Uh, it does produce a, a fairly decent amount of rain, which is a big positive. And you can see where it produces some snows down, actually even further south than what I described earlier on, on this model. I think that's probably, a little bit much. I'm going to lean toward the Europeans idea. Uh, the GFS has a very fairly deep low that goes up into western New York uh, and you can start to see the snows that gradually develop uh, across West Virginia, western Pennsylvania and to parts of upstate New York until it pulls out and it does have a somewhat colder look although this is not Arctic air that we're talking about. Uh, this is basically air that's being produced by the cyclones themselves what I often call do-it-yourself cold air. Now, I know a lot of you have interests that are on my uh, on uh, these videos that are watching from other parts of the country. So, you know what, I'm going to widen out and show you the surface map because of the dry conditions that are going on in the West. Um, and we'll roll it back a bit. And even for the Western states now, there is more activity uh, that's coming in. You see low pressure develops in eastern Colorado with that um, second system and brings some snow. Uh, to northern Colorado and on up through the Dakotas uh, as the low winds uh, uh, intensifies and moves up uh, into Minnesota. And then you get that coastal low that gets uh, becomes the main uh, dominant feature for the east. You can see it there. But we also start to see, you know, weather systems in the longer term trying to crash uh, into the west and bringing some snows there. So this is all going to be um, really something that we're going to watch evolve over time. And I don't want to forget my friends up in the um, Canadian Maritime Provinces because they like to see this stuff too, and we will go back. And, you know, there's been a fair absence of cold air uh, in Canada. Uh, temperatures have been running above normal there, and, you know, the snowpack that was growing rapidly in North America has since uh, declined uh, considerably. And with regard to the system that comes in for next weekend, while well, the first system for Tuesday lifts up and brings rain into southeastern Canada and the Canadian Maritimes uh, later this week, and we get some cold air that comes in, but not especially cold. And then that system for next weekend uh, brings rain up into southeastern Canada and for the Canadian Maritime provinces, it would be some rain and wind uh, if that's the case. But there's colder air that comes down in later in the period. So um, much to watch here, obviously. You know, while we have it, let's take a look. Um, I want to go to, you know, I pointed this out yesterday. Let me see if I can get the, we'll get the snow cover measures and take a look and see what, what, they're, what they're doing, if it will let me. Is it going to let me? Oh, boy. Let's try this. No. Not going to let me do that. So let's uh, hang on. I'm going to try it a different way. Hang on, everybody. I should have put put this up beforehand, and it would have made life a whole lot easier. Let me get this out of the way. Nope, it's not letting me do it. You're going to have to take my word for the fact. Oh, now it's letting me do it. Okay, great. Sorry, I should have put this up ahead of time, but you know sometimes these things pop into my head. 
uh, where I want to, um, you know, kind of ad lib this along the way. By the way, even before we get to that, the teleconnection si uh, uh, signals have us going into a, a negative North Atlantic oscillation pattern, which would be positive for a system along the East Coast. Uh, it also has a negative uh, uh, East Pacific oscillation pattern, which would be uh, positive for colder air, not polar, you know, nothing Arctic in, in, in nature, but a, a colder scheme of things uh, relative to normal. And it has a negative Pacific North America oscillation, which um, works in the opposite direction. So two of these uh, are favorable for East Coast development, and one of them is not um, quite favorable. And as we uh, look, and that PNA is also not favorable for cold. And you know, I want to just go back. Let me pull up the snow cover in the the snow cover indices and 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 the maps with that. And when we look at what's happened uh, in Siberia, by the way, you know, now that we're going into the middle of November, it still is growing at an almost parabolic rate and ahead of the, anything in the last 13 years. But look what's happened in North America. That snow cover has just absolutely crashed. Uh, from being right at the top of the list to now being at the very bottom. I have never seen, I have not seen any research tying North America snow cover um, with uh, winters here in the east because, you know, something like this can be made up in a big hurry if the pattern changes. But um, I would think it's not a positive to see that uh, in the short term. But you know what? I don't know. I'm just kind of speaking, you know, off the top of my head. So let's see what happens. In the meantime, we're going to enjoy the rest of our weekend because the weather is going to be especially nice so right uh, through Sunday here in the Northeast. As you can take a look, um, we don't have uh, too much to worry now that this cold, this quick cold shot of air is moving out and we've got a west wind at high pressure. We should be back up into the 60s. Then we get that little shot of rain uh, for Tuesday and then we sit back and wait to see what happens later this week. Don't forget SS Storm Chasers. When uh, these storms finally get around to coming here, uh, they'll be uh, very active. And all the latest weather on meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, and nycweathernow.com.